Myself wondering what did happen to the last ten? I ran away with my life fast forward and never turned back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. It's more of the same, but that's not a bad thing. You actually get much bigger screen real estate than the previous H2O. We're up to seven inches here. So this is actually quite nice. We have done the latest update as of September 5th, 2019. You do have home, my books, my collections, articles, Kobo store, recommended wish list, activity settings and help. We'll just look at the settings really quick here. You do have overdrive, you have accounts, you can set up your Facebook and everything like that. Beta features down here, you have web browser and large print mode that just changes all of the print into larger uh, format. You do have some stuff up here as well, brightness, which we will get into a little bit later on. You have Wi-Fi, battery, sync, content, and look for updates, search in book, and you have my books, uh, find your next read at the Kobo store, things you've read, uh, recommended to you, and the current reading right there, and the percentage of uh, your, well, progress in said book. Into the book now, you do have the physical page turn buttons that was pretty much borrowed from the Forma, although the overall look is as well, but it's the same company, so it's all good. You can long press on something, and this allows you to look things up at the bottom here in English by default, and you have some other dictionaries here as well, uh, German to English, Fr uh, Spanish to English, etc. You can download more ones if you want. Highlights, you have add notes. We're gonna look at the keyboard really quick here. Just click that go to add note and your keyboard is right here they've always done a very unconventional qwerty because everything's kind of stacked on top of each other rather than staggered you can also go here and go search and that is in book wikipedia and google and it will open the beta feature uh, browser it seems that if it's kobo or if it's amazon the browser is never really 100 percent it's always experimental or beta so that's really nice you can box lots of text as well by sliding the little anchor turning pages is very quick you can swipe you can tap you can press the physical page turn buttons pressing and holding the physical page turn buttons goes through the book at a rapid pace and it does uh it makes everything a little bit um, A2 mode E, which it actually reduces the quality to make sure it's quicker. Double tapping actually doesn't go to the next chapter like the Barnes & Noble devices, it just changes two pages at the same time. Clicking in the center, you do have quick nav, you have ways to change your text, and I just cancelled it. You do have font size, line spacing, margins, everything changes live, everything changes really quick. You do have a little gear here as well, and this takes you to the reading settings. You can use it inverted, next and previous, previous and next. This is useful for mangas and stuff like that. Where you tap on the screen, and you do have page two of two that you can refresh every chapter, refresh uh, every one page to 10 pages to chapter, then some other progress settings as well. You do have some graphs down here, how much uh, minutes there are, how many minutes there are left in here, hours to go, percentage read, and you do have some related reads. Clicking on the three dots at the bottom, you have annotations, view details, search in book, dictionary, and reading settings once again. Bookmarks are at the top right corner. If you tap, the little page rolls down like that. All right, so you're probably asking what's new about the device then in terms of features on the reading experience. Well, there's a couple things. At the very bottom, you'll see, and we're gonna leave this detached for this, there's a little tiny black bar showing how far you are on the book. So we're about halfway through, so that's really cool that it is there on every page. And we also have headers and footers that are now more explanatory. They show a lot of things that are going on, what chapter, how many pages left, what book, how many pages out of what page. It's really cool because now on every single page and every single chapter, you do have that on there. We also have something here, which is the scrubber. And you usually had to click it open before, but now it's here. And now it is a more advanced. So you see, as I moved away from that, it actually keeps one or two breadcrumbs of where I was. So I can actually click on that section and go right back to it. Or if I don't wanna 
run the risk of maybe hitting one or two counts on either side, you can actually click the back to page and back to page. So you can go to and from all of your recent findings on the scrubber at the bottom. So that is a little bit of the things that are new and more advanced with this device. PDFs we have to show because, well, it's a bigger screen now, so it just makes sense. Here's the full screen PDF. You can do some zooms. You do have a mini map at the top left corner too, but the uh, functionality is somewhat a little bit spotty. Sometimes it takes a second to render and it kicks you out of the navigation mode. You just have to be patient, but once it is working properly, it's very quick, it's very snappy, and you know exactly where you are on the page. Tapping in the center removes all the elements. Tapping in the center again brings them back. You don't have too many options. You have quick nav and you have zoom, which either rotates or has a zoom level that you can move in and out respectively. You still cannot do any sort of long pressing as the Amazon you can. You do have the physical page turn buttons. They do do something, which is very nice, but they lose the ability to uh, quick page turn. So if you're reading a manga in side loaded that is uh, PDF format, you will not actually be able to take advantage of the quick page turning uh, feature. So that's a little bit of a downside, but the screen is very nicely formatted. There's no stretching. It fits to screen by default. It looks very good. It's high quality and it functions very well. It almost feels like this device is built for manga. It's roughly the exact size a real manga would be from Japan. Uh, they're scaled down more than the American ones usually. And you do have the quick page turn feature that is actually really nice. It, it zooms through the book. It uh, turns everything a little bit gray so it can render quicker. And you know exactly where you are and it's actually still readable quality when you're navigating. You also have the ability to pinch and zoom, although you do lose that mini map. And again, you have to be patient with it because sometimes it might think that you're turning uh, the page if you're not pressing correctly. And it is very A2 mode-ish. Once again, A2 mode is when the quality gets reduced and then you see this, it starts to render. But the quality is very good. And you know what? The extra bit of screen real estate means that you don't always have to pinch and zoom. You can leave it in the full screen and still be able to read very comfortably your manga experience. This is the Kobo store. You can look at recommended, daily ebook deal, trending now, top picks, categories. You can add things to your wish list or borrow from Overdrive. We have a video showing how to do this on our YouTube channel. You basically create an account, uh, use your library card, and you can just read books for free from your local library. We have the Vancouver library on ours usually. You can search for anything you want in the search menu here. You can see some recent searches I had was manga and Naruto to showcase the manga experience. Once you click on something, you do get the buying decision, wish list ad, you get synopsis, details, and related. Unlike Kindle, everything is under one scrollable roof. You do have everything under tabs here, and you can read previews and everything on some books. For some reason, this one doesn't have it. You can already have read it or not interested on it, and you can upgrade to VIP right there, and you can redeem some Kobo super points there as well. Not every book will have that, but ones that are eligible will. E-readers have never handled web browsing very well outside of the prosumer realm. This is because they're not made for it. They're made for reading. If you had to use the web browser, this is what you are to expect. Everything on this is fully loaded. It is kind of that slow. You just have to be patient with it. Uh, it's kind of almost a last ditch effort if you wanted to pull up the web browser on your device. This is scrolling our website. You can see it scrolls all right, but it takes a little bit of time to render in between scrolls. And once again, it triggers that A2 mode when you are moving anything on the page. It does turn it into the mobile version because it is easier and quicker to load. And pinching and zooming does seem to trigger sometimes, but not all the time. Again, it thinks you're doing other things. So when it is located under beta features, there is a reason for that because it doesn't seem the uh, web browsing experience is all there. But again, you're not buying that to view web pages anyways. Kobo was one of the first adopters of the warm lighting or comfort lighting or just the other colored LEDs. And it really shows here with the quality. This is the blue uh, slash white LEDs and you can trigger the brightness up or down. And you do have the ability to change to orange LEDs as well. And it is quite nice, but it can get a little too orange, I would say. So you can turn them both on at the same time, which companies like Boyu haven't even been able to figure out. So you can kind of choose your level 
of kind of white balance, which is very nice. You also have natural light with auto and you can click on learn more and then it explains what the natural light setting is for, what does it do, and it has when, why should I set my bedtime showing you the benefits of not having blue light in your face before you go to sleep. So it is actually an overall very nice light package. The distribution is perfect corner to corner. There's no discoloration or graying in any of the corners or along the side. It's uh, one of the best glow lights we've seen so far. The Kobo Libra was a good move by Kobo. It looks great, it's smaller than a Forma, it's cheaper than a Forma, and it's continuing on the H2O capabilities that Kobo was really known for with a couple devices that they had with waterproofing capabilities. This thing performs very well, it's a good all-around package, and it comes in two different colors, which is kind of rare for Kobo in the most recent years. If you guys have any other questions, comments, or concerns, let us know, and for a full review on the Kobo Libra H2O, this is Peter.